watchword for beaches is they are dynamic. They are always changing. They're never stable. Florida has the distinction of spending more money on beach nourishment than all the other states put together. We have a lot of infrastructure on the beach and people come to Florida for beaches, don't they? So they don't spend much money on nourishment. But um, if you're going to maintain beaches, that's what you have to do. Do turtles nest on nourished beaches? No. Not as frequently. Part of the reason is that turtles are really sensitive to the grain size being already sorted. May not be apparent to you, but these waves are sorting the grain size. So as these waves wash in, the sand dries, the fine stuff blows up, and you have certain sizes of grains remaining. So some states, for instance, have laws that say when you nourish a beach, you have to nourish with grain size that's similar to what was there. So regulators, and some of you in your careers may very well work for an agency that has some role in, in regulating beaches. That role might be determining whether you can nourish an area, how to pick sand. It might be protecting the wildlife like turtles and um, so forth. So this is a major issue that you may become familiar with in your career, but you at least should be, as a citizen, aware of how much of your tax money goes for it. So what's the beach made of then? Anybody know what this is? Where it comes from? Broken up. The waves deposited. Broken up. It's basically coquina. Right offshore, there's a lot of this rock that's sticking out. The waves are hitting it. In some cases, the sand is moving across it, breaking it up. And in a sense, it's re-nourishing the beach constantly. Quartz. Yeah. A lot of the sand that you see in this system was one time inland, broken down, um, wash down rivers and gets out into the littoral zone and then moves south. Much of the sand along the southeast coast that we see in our beaches is the result of ice age melting. Moving huge amounts of water and with it lots of sand. What's the lecture about? Sand is limited, okay? It's not a lot of it out there. Now look back at the scarp and you can see that in that scarp there is a lot of shell. It's easier to move shell than it is fine grains of sand. Any, anybody know why? Surface area. Surface More surface area. area, absolutely. There are common trust laws. For instance, Florida was first settled by the Spanish. We in Florida use the common laws from Spain. If there's no law that says anything about anything, then you revert back to the common law of Spain. The rest of the 13 colonies all came from England. They were settled by the English. So they come to English common law. This is what makes managing beaches really fascinating and interesting, but it also means if you move from state to state, you gotta get a book on common law to make sure you know what to do. Notice this particular vegetation. We're seeing um, sea oats, and if you look carefully, you'll see a couple of other species. There's hydrocotyl, one of the most ubiquitous weeds that we have. It likes sand. It's got a rhizome that'll grow way down in the sand. The softer, looser the sand, the deeper it'll go. Extensive root system. But one of the things that these kinds of plants do because they have extensive root systems is they basically hold the sand in place. What's a swale? A little dip, maybe? All a swale is, a is is a depression. And that depression can actually be pretty deep. It can, it can be so deep that it can, it can intercept the water table. This one doesn't, but some of them do. And in fact, some of the rarest wetlands we have are interswale wetlands in parts of the southeastern coast. They're rare because it's not a habitat that, that occurs all the time. And also because even the wettest one sometimes dries out, unless they're right in contact with the sea level. So there are two things that happen in swales. One is they tend to be wetter, more moist. Because they're more moist, they tend to hold on to a little more organic matter. It breaks down more slowly. Um, so they can harbor species that aren't as good at, at uh, scavenging nutrients in the sand. And they will even accumulate little um, pockets of organic soil. This zone was often 15 to 20 degrees warmer in midday. You get and put a thermometer right down there. Just think about it. The breeze is kind of traveling over it. It gets really hot. Different environmental constraints essentially filter different species. This is hotter, but it's got more water, okay? Now let's walk up and look at the vegetation. You'll start seeing woody vegetation as we get to the top. You don't see any woody vegetation down here. 